there's something really soothing about creating repeating patterns of simple shapes. Something that puts your mind and body in a state of relaxed focus. And creating these patterns with watercolour adds to that relaxed state. As the watercolour does the work, it flows, bleeds and blends across the page, creating its own magic. So today I'm going to share with you three ideas for patterns that you can paint that all start with a circle. These are really good to paint if you're a beginner to watercolour because they get you used to the action of the brush and the way that the watercolour functions and the way that it behaves with different amounts of water. But they're also great to paint if you're more experienced with watercolour. They're relaxing and calming and allow you to create without pressure. Earlier this week I made a video where I shared how to generate patterns like these, starting with really simple shapes. And I just work in my sketchbook in pencil and just went from really simple shapes uh, to much more complex patterns. So these are the colours I'm going to be using today. So I really want to focus on pink, so I've got a couple here and then I've got some that I'm going to use as accent colours. So this is permanent rose. And then I've got Potter's Pink as well, which is a granulating colour, so you get all of these lovely kind of textures on the page. And then I've got a yellow Real Sienna, that's going to allow me to make some kind of peachy pinky colours. So I've got Buff Titanium, which I really like to use because it's neutral, but it adds a little bit of opacity and kind of chalkiness to some of the colours. And then I've got Thalo Turquoise. That's kind of given me three primaries, so I could mix pretty much any colour I like from these. And then I've got some kind of supporting colours that do like special effectsy type things. But this can work with any set of colours that you've got. So just work with the colours that you've got and the colours in your palette. You could try picking out one that you think is going to be a key colour, like this pinky colour. And then just try working with it uh, with other colours and try and find which ones support it really nicely and which ones mix with it really nicely. I've got some watercolour paper. This is cotton watercolour paper that I've just torn to size and I'm going to use some masking tape and uh, stick it down to the table. I've got my paintbrush and this is a size 6 round brush that comes to a nice fine point. And then for some of the patterns I want to sketch them out first so I've got a ruler and a pencil. That's This isn't necessary, this is just if you really want your patterns to be really regular uh, then a ruler can be helpful. I've got my colours set out here in this little plate that I'm using as a palette and then I've got a couple of gels of water and some paper towel just to block my paintbrush on. So I will list all of the supplies I'm using and all of the paints colours in my description box but it's important that you, you don't need to use exactly the same supplies I'm using, you don't need to use the same colours, you don't need to use the same paper, uh, just work with what you've got if you find the process a little bit frustrating rather than relaxing, then that's the time to maybe think about upgrading your paint colours or your paper quality and, and just see if that makes a difference. I found that the colours, I think, flow a little bit better on cotton paper and I, I do generally pre prefer the result, uh, but there are plenty of good non-cotton papers as well. Um, I'm going to do a little review of different types of watercolour paper, uh, different qualities and different price points. Uh, that's going to come up in a few weeks time, so um, I will I will be sharing that with you. But, uh, but yeah, I think for these I'd say work with what you have. So the first pattern I'm going to do is a really really simple one and it's just to paint a pattern of circles and allow them to touch and allow the colours to blend in between the different circles. You'll have probably seen other artists do this or something similar before because it's a really nice way to kind of showcase what the watercolours can do. I'm going to start by just adding a little drop of water to each of my pans here that I'm going to use. That will just wake the colours up. The water starts melting into the colours. And then you can move it around a bit with your brush and then you can work with the colours straight from the, the, the pans, but I like to move them onto a palette. And you can see this one's already messy, it's already dirty and it's already got lots of colours on. What I tend to do is have different areas of the palette that I work different colours in. So I can put this pink one here, wash my brush, 
and go into the yellow. This raw sienna is a nice, like, warm, like, egg yolk yellow. And I can put this one here. Now, these two areas have touched, but I don't really mind that because actually what I want is a whole range of different colours on my paper. So I'm going to get some bleed between these two different areas. And that's going to be nice. It's going to be fine. For this kind of painting, anyway. So I'm going to do the same with each of these colours, kind of put them in their own area on this palette, and then not mind too much if they if they mix or when they mix. So I've cleaned my brush of colour by dipping it in the water and taking off some excess on the edge. And then let's see, I'm going to go in this little bit where the pink and the yellow have blended. And I'm going to move my brush around in that area and just pick up some of that colour. And I don't really mind for this pattern what colour that's going to be. It's probably going to be a nice kind of peachy colour because of the pink and the yellow. That's You get that kind of peachy orangey colour when they mix. And I'm just going to take it over to my paper and I'm going to start painting a circle. I'm start in one corner and move down. And because I'm right-handed, I'm going to start in the top left corner and move down towards the bottom right of the paper. And I'm just going to start by trying to paint a circle. Fill it in. And you can see that my circle here is kind of rough. And I've not gone to the edges of the paper yet. What I'm going to do now is just take my brush, just the tip of the brush, and draw the edges of that circle out. And I'm going to try and make it nice and round, but, you know, if it doesn't end up being perfect, it's okay. So there we go, I've got one circle. Now I can wash my brush, take off some of the excess water on my paper towel, and I can dip it in another colour. So let's go for this Potter's Pink. And I'm going to put another circle next to it. I'm going to make this one a smaller one. And I start by just painting a small circle. And then I'm going to use the tip of my brush to enlarge it. And you can see that I'm kind of edging closer and closer to this circle here. And eventually I'm going to touch. And you'll start to see that uh, one of the circles will start bleeding into the other. And it's usually the circle that's wetter, so the one that has more water on it will start bleeding into the other. But then some colours are more powerful, some of the pigments are more powerful than others as well. So some are a bit more like bullish and they'll push their way into, into slightly less wet areas. So these two colours here, I've just touched them there, and I can see that this potter's pink is just starting to bleed a little bit into this first circle that I made. And that's exactly what I want. I want those little bleeds. So I'm going to change my colour again. And I'm going to go for... I think I could do with a little bit more water. This uh, buff titanium. I'm going to make a little circle here. And I want it to touch both of these. So I'm starting out small. And then using the tip of my brush to make it slightly bigger and push it into both of those other circles. So now I want to make another circle and I want it to touch these two. I'm making this one a nice bright pink. Again, start fairly small and then just make it a little bit bigger until it touches both of the previous circles. And this time you'll see that this buff titanium has bled really quickly into this pink. This because this buff titanium is a really kind of, I don't know, it's kind of really powerful colour that likes to kind of push its way into other colours and it leaves these little rivulet patterns behind, which I find really pretty. So that's why I like using that one. The other thing I can do is I can just take some water. 
So this is water from my jar. It's a little bit pink because of those previous colours I've got in it, but that's okay. And I'm just making the same circle here and allowing it to touch these two next to it. And as it touches that pink circle, it gets a little influx of pink. And that'll continue as the uh, as the these colours begin to dry. They'll they'll just kind of settle out and move around. So I'm just going to keep going and filling this whole page with different circles. I'm going to do some small, some large, different sizes, mix them up and just enjoy watching these colours blend, seeing what colours I can get from my palette, what different combinations of colours I can get and the unexpected things that happen when I put them on the page. To do something based on this one here. You may find it useful to practice this shape first. So I'm using the tip of my brush and using that to create the point of the petal and then I can press down and I'm creating that the top shape, the top curve. And I lift up my brush again and it should come to a bit of a point. And then I go back to the first point and push down again, this time curving in the opposite direction. And that leaves me with this little kind of petal shape, which has a stripe down the middle of it, and I can fill that in. You could leave it if you wanted. And then for the second one, I'm just doing the same thing, but I'm starting at the top. So use the tip of my brush, push down and create the bottom swipe, lifting up to create that point again. Then starting here with the tip of my brush, pushing down, creating the top of the petal and lifting it up. And filling in. So my point here isn't very very good so I can just use the tip of my brush to neaten that all up. I want my pattern to be nice and regular on the paper and you don't need to do this if you uh, if you don't want to but I'm just going to put in some pencil guidelines just to give me a grid to work to so that I can keep it like nice and neat across the page. So now I've got my pencil lines ruled on here and I'm just going to go over very lightly with my eraser. I want to be able to see where these lines are, but the more I can erase of them before I start painting, the better the final result will be. So if you put watercolour or even just water over the top of a pencil line, you won't be able to erase it again. So I'm picking up my colour on my brush and I'm going to make that pattern with my brush. So putting the point down and I'm using the corners of the grid as my guide points for my kind of petal shapes. So start in this corner, press down and lift up and try and get my petal to that corner, from corner to corner of the grid square. And then press down again, come up and just neaten any edges or neaten the shape if you want with the tip of your brush. So I can now start in the next square and go from the top left corner to the bottom right corner of that square. So start in the corner, press my brush down, 
in a little curve to the bottom corner of the square. Then do the other side, lift it up and then fill in and neaten up the shape. Now you can change your colour whenever you fancy. And because I'm going to touch the, uh, the corner here, the wet paint that I've just put down here will run into the shape that I've put down before, hopefully. If you don't want your colours to run, you can just leave a tiny little gap between them. And if they're not running very much, you can kind of tap that corner just a little bit and just encourage them. And as I'm drawing, I want, as I'm drawing, as I'm painting, I want some areas to be stronger. I want the values to be deeper. So I can just tap in a little bit more colour in a couple of places so that I end up with darker colour in those areas. So there's one stripe all the way along the top and I'm going to keep going with this pattern. If you wanted to, you could do your petals this way and end up with a nice kind of circular shape along this row and then start another row of circles. But I'm going to carry on with this pattern this way around, doing the petals the same way. And you end up with something that looks a bit like, looks a bit like knitting or something like that. So you can get really different effects in your patterns just by changing the orientation of your shapes. For my next set of patterns, when I was developing them, I started seeing what would happen if you kind of cut circles in half and just started arranging them like that, or um, with these ones here, um, what happens if you used a quarter circle, or like these ones where you used like three quarters of a circle. And I really liked these and the way that they kind of incorporated the curved and the straight lines, and you could get really interesting patterns out of them by arranging them in different ways. Because the pattern I want to do here is a little bit more complex, I'm working out whether it fits in the grid that I want to use. So I've got a grid here that is um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 centimetres across, well 12 across and uh, I think it's 18 down, no 16 down. And, uh, and I'm just seeing whether these little patterns fit in. So I've got these um, like circle with a kind of quarter cut out of it. Looks a bit like a Pac-Man and you can cut any, any quarter, any of the four quarters out of the circle. So there's four different variations like this. And what I found is that if you put two of them together they make like a little kind of S shape like that. So this one starts with the top right hand kind of quarter taken out of the circle 
and then that's paired with one with the bottom left hand corner taken out of the circle. This one has the bottom right hand corner removed from the circle and then the top left hand removed from the circle and it fits into that. So what I want to do is a repeating pattern of these little S shapes across the page. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time now just working out how I want my pattern to fit on the page to get a really interesting repeat of these different shapes so that they nicely alternate. It takes a little bit of headroom and it's good to practice it uh, in pencil first before going in with watercolour. So there we go, there's my grid and again I'm going to go over with my eraser and just take the heat out of it. Anywhere that looks really dark I'm going to try and lighten up those lines as much as possible. So I'm starting at this top left hand corner and I'm starting by drawing in each little kind of Pac-Man-y type quarter circle using my the tip of my brush to draw those straight lines and then filling in the rest of the circle using the tip of the brush again to neaten up the edges. And then I'm going to slightly alter my colour and draw more straight lines. This time I'm leaving out the top left hand side of the circle. And I've drawn these lines not quite up to my guidelines so far. Um, again I'm doing the same as I've done in previous patterns where I've kind of drawn my shape roughly a little bit smaller than I want it and then I can begin to use the tip of my brush to draw out the edges. And then when I feel like I've got my circle kind of pretty much as I want it, then I'm going to draw that line along and join those two shapes together. So I'm going to go in with my next one here and for this shape I started off with a circle that missed out the bottom right hand corner. So now I'm going to draw in one that misses out the top right hand corner. So I'm going to start with those lines here, straight lines there, drawing roughly the shape that I want and then use the tip of my brush to smooth it all out and make the circle or the circular parts of it nice and neat and then just straighten that line there. And then I can go in with its partner I'm doing the same thing, I'm drawing my straight lines, not quite up to the guidelines, painting in most of the rest of the shape, not worrying too much about the shape of it, and then using the tip of my brush and the edge of it to really make those curves nice and smooth. And then when I'm happy with the circle, I can redraw those straight lines right up to the guidelines so that kind of completes my little S shape. When it comes to doing the second row I'm going to mirror the shapes that are on the first row. So as this one had the bottom right hand corner of the circle missing, this one's going to have the top right hand of the circle missing. So I've done my rough L shape, my rough circle, I'm using the tip of my brush to smooth out that circle. And then when I'm happy with the shape of it, I just knitting those straight lines. Change my colour and then I put in its kind of complement. So it's easier to tell where the little L shape goes this time because there's a kind of an obvious gap for it. 
little L shape. Roughly put in the circle. Use the tip of my brush to make it as neat and round as I can. Just pulling it out and then finish off that L shape and join those areas together. And I can see that this pink had already started to dry. What I can do is go in with a little bit more pink on this side and just flood this area completely again. And that will give me a much more even blend as I go into the second shape. So this one I started going the wrong way. I started doing this shape again. But it's not the end of the world because what I actually need to do is to draw my L that way so that the bottom right hand side of the circle is missing. Of course, if you, if you get it wrong, don't worry about it. Just keep going. Nobody's going to notice if you've got one of your S shapes the wrong way around. In fact, I may well do it just because. So this pattern is a lot more complex than the previous ones. The key to it is to um, spend some time um, getting it into your head first, uh, working it out in pencil, maybe practicing a little bit before you go in with the watercolour. And when you're working with patterns, really simple patterns are fun. So when you get more complex ones, you start to bring in your own style to it. And when you start generating your patterns, you can really bring your own personality and your own, uh, your own voice to it. And you end up with something that's really unique and really you. do it wrong at some point. That one's the wrong way around. Never mind, I'm going to keep going. Thanks very much for watching today. I really hope that you have fun uh, playing with these three patterns and I'd love to see what patterns you make and what patterns you can generate. You can find me on Instagram at Lou Rachel Davis. If you liked the video then please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more then please do subscribe to the channel. I've got lots more patterns coming up in the next few weeks and I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks very much, bye bye. <laughs>